I grew up a Padres fan in the mid 2000s, so you can say that there really wasn't much to cheer for at that time. The most vivid memories from that time are losing to the Cardinals in the playoffs two years in a row, and that Matt Holliday never touched home plate. There's a reason why we called AJ Preller a Rockstar GM in 2015. Remember when he made all those trades? Now that I think about it, expect a video on that at some point. He was the Rockstar GM because Padres fans had basically nothing to cheer for for a long time. Going back to the mid 2000s, I'm not saying that there weren't any great players. Trevor Hoffman is one of my favorite players ever, same with Adrian Gonzalez, despite only being on the team for 5 seasons. However, there is one name that brings back some memories. Jake Peavy. Peavy was one of my favorite players growing up, and is one of the greatest pitchers in Padres history. But the question came in my head, what happened to Jake Peavy? So that's what we're going to answer in this video. Today we're going to look at the career of Jake Peavy and figure out why he fell off the radar. Let's get into it. PV entered the 1999 MLB draft straight out of high school. Despite being named the high school pitcher of the year in Alabama, he wasn't taken until the 15th round, 472nd overall to be exact. Despite this draft position, he made his mark immediately in rookie league. From 1999 to 2002, he continued to improve, and this didn't go unnoticed by experts. In 2001 and 2002, he was ranked as a top 40 prospect by Baseball America. After a successful half season in AA, the Padres called up Peavy in mid-2002. He made his debut on June 22nd against the New York Yankees. He lost the game, allowing only one run on three hits in six innings, while striking out four. Okay, just a little tangent. I made a video for Stark Raving Sports earlier in the week, just a little plug, but that's not why I'm stopping. I noticed a few comments on that video saying that I pronounce innings in an odd way. Like I say innings and not innings. And they were absolutely right. I guarantee if you watch that video and my previous videos on this channel, I will say innings and not innings. So I will make an effort to pronounce innings correctly from now on. And if I say it wrong at any point, you guys should remind me. Alright, enough with the tangent, back to Jake Peavy. The rest of his rookie season didn't go so well, but so do most rookie seasons. Not everyone can be Pete Alonso and break records like it's nothing. There was a silver lining though. Despite Peavy's high ERA, his FIP was significantly lower, meaning his first full season should show some improvement. Did he improve in 2003? Sort of. While his ERA went down, his FIP went up. So it wasn't a great season, but 2004? That was something else. The Padres finally moved away from Qualcomm Stadium into Petco Park. A new park must have definitely put Peavy in a great mood during every home start because he was just incredible. His ERA was the best in the majors at 2.27. He became the youngest pitcher to win an ERA title since Dwight Gooden in 1985. It was truly a breakout season for Peavy, and the Padres rewarded him by giving him a 5-year, $14.5 million contract. 2005 was quite the follow-up from Peavy's 2004 performance. Peavy was selected to his first All-Star game as he would go on to lead the National League in strikeouts with 216, second in the majors to Johan Santana. The Padres went on to win the NL West, which is clearly the most convincing division win I've ever seen. However, Peavy didn't pitch well in the playoffs, allowing 8 runs in 4 and 1 3rd innings against the Cardinals. In part due to a rocky start to the 2006 season, Peavy ended up with worse numbers than 2005, but he still finished second in the NL in strikeouts. As the Padres were back in the playoffs, Peavy had a chance to redeem himself, against the Cardinals no less. Let's just say it didn't go very well. Clearly to Peavy, 2007 was a year where he needed to prove his worth. Well, he definitely did that and then some. Along with his second All-Star appearance, he won the NL Cy Young Award unanimously. He also won the Pitcher's Triple Crown as he led the National League in wins, ERA, and strikeouts, becoming only the 8th player since 1969 to accomplish this. Just looking at his numbers, it's no wonder why the Padres would offer their biggest contract in franchise history up to that point. Following his incredible season, PV signed a 4-year, $52 million extension with the team. 2008 would be more of the same for PV, but as the Padres were clearly not getting any better, the 2008 offseason was filled with PV trade rumors. These rumors would become reality at the 2009 trade deadline as the Padres traded PV to the Chicago White Sox for these 4 players. Now, Padres fans will definitely recognize the legend himself, Clayton Richard. As for the rest of the players, not so much. Oh yeah, PV was pretty good in 2009 too. 
2010 was PV's first full season in Chicago. However, 2010 and 2011 were pretty similar as PV suffered injuries that made him miss half of his starts. And in the games that he did play in, he didn't perform particularly well. 2012 was a different story though. He was an all-star and won the Gold Glove Award. This convinced the White Sox to offer him a two-year extension worth $29 million, with a vesting option for 2015. 2013 wouldn't start great for Peavy as he suffered another injury. This time, it was a rib fracture. His fortune changed at the end of the season because after he was traded to the Red Sox near the trade deadline, he was part of the championship winning team, Peavy's first of his career. After another midseason trade in 2014, this time to the Giants, Peavy won his second championship. He played pretty well in his first season in San Francisco. He earned a two year, $24 million contract after the 2014 season. Unfortunately, it would be all downhill from there. While Peavy had decent stats in 2015, it was another injury plagued season. Heading into 2016, some news hit that would change Peavy's life. Two days into San Francisco's 2016 spring training camp, Peavy learned that a financial advisor to whom he had entrusted his retirement savings had siphoned away some $15 million to $20 million in a Ponzi-like scheme. The rest of that season, he was buried under an avalanche of depositions, lawyers, and numbers he didn't fully understand, reeling from the shattered trust of a man he thought was his friend. This definitely played a part in Peavy's 2016 performance as it was his worst season to date. Then three days after that season ended, Peavy came home to divorce papers served by his high school sweetheart, Katie. The Giants didn't re-sign him after the season as Peavy became a free agent for the first time in his career. Peavy didn't pitch in 2017 as he was dealing with his divorce and no one offered him a contract. The divorce was finalized on November 28, 2017 as he and his ex maintained joint custody of their children. In 2018, PV attempted a comeback, but it didn't work out. He officially announced his retirement on May 5th, 2019, almost three years since the last pitch he threw. Now, PV is doing just fine as he spends time with his children in Alabama. He's living comfortably too. In 2008, PV bought a 5,000 acre ranch in Wilcox County, Alabama. The property includes a bowling alley, saloon, hunting lodge, and a replica of Fenway Park. And going back to that Ponzi scheme story, this didn't really do too much to PV financially as he is still more than financially secure. In the end, PV's career ended up like a lot of promising pitching careers, full of fatigue and injuries. But PV will always be one of my favorite players and I assume the same could be said for many other Padres fans, and baseball fans alike. His run of dominance was short, but it was still memorable. PV shows that you don't need to make the Hall of Fame for your time in the big leagues to be remembered. I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who came to the channel for my video on Stark Raving Sports. If you haven't seen that video, it's about Felix Hernandez. There will be a link to it in the description, so go ahead and watch it. I also have a Twitter account. I think I would try to post some stuff on there, but I don't know how likely that is. So to be honest, don't expect a super active account. I just think it's a good thing to have just in case something happens on the channel. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.